how do you feel about somebody who right now doesn't have a lot of extra weight to lose or any jumping into a three day water fast or even 24 hours, somebody that just feels like they don't want to lose any weight at this point. And then as a sub category on that muscle mass with say fasting 24 hours at a time and then beyond. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy you asked me about the muscle mass one because it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's people start to get critical of fasting because of the muscle mass. So the, if you don't want to lose weight and you want the healing benefits of fasting, make sure you're eating enough before you go into the fast, then do your fast and make sure you're eating enough when you come out. A three-day water fast for somebody who doesn't want to lose weight. They may feel like they lost weight, but the minute they go back into food, especially if you go back into protein and you protein load, what's going to end up ha happening is you'll gain the, the weight back. We have to remember the body is always trying to come to homeostasis. So the person that has to lose, wants to, the body needs to release weight, will release weight and come back to a balanced point. And somebody whose body doesn't need to release weight will go on a longer fast, might lose weight, but the minute they eat food, they come back to this balanced point. So I don't, what were those, um, do you remember as a kid, those clowns that we would like punch and they would knock over and then they would come back up again. Yes. They were like I haven't thought about those in years. Yeah, what, what yeah. do we call those? They were like Bozo the they Clown. They had like a something like that. They had a weight in the bottom and they would just back and forth. That's right. It's funny you don't see them anymore, but yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what happened to them. But so if you have to lose weight, you know, it's like you go into the fasted state and then the body is trying, will try to recalibrate itself back to that middle point. Same thing if you need to gain weight. So we're always coming back to homeostasis. So that's the first thing. Okay. Second thing, let's talk about the muscle loss. There's, there's two critiques I see over and over and over again about fasting that I would love to clear up. And a good reason why I wrote Eat Like a Girl. The first one is you when you fast, you're going to lose muscle. Now you have to understand that when you are fasting, your body is getting rid of what no longer serves it. So it is breaking down muscle. It is getting rid of stored sugar in muscle so it can make itself new again. And so if you don't want to lose muscle, you go into the fasted state. But once you come back into the fed state, make sure you're powering up on protein. You got to mega load on protein so that you can stimulate that mTOR pathway and you can get the growth of muscle again. But fasting, if, you, if you're trying to gain muscle and all you're doing is fasting and not eating more protein in the fed state, yes, you will continue to see your muscles shrink. But when we go into the gym and we lift a weight, what the purpose of that process is, is to break down a muscle so it will build itself stronger again. When we go into a fasted state, the purpose in these fasted states can be breaking muscle down, getting rid of no what no longer serves it. So refuel it when you go back into the fed state. So that is protein, 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 protein. Okay, the other piece of this is the microbiome. I just have to throw it in because this is the same thing that I hear. Fasting destroys the microbiome. Okay, in the fasted state, what's happening is your intelligent body is getting rid of the microbes that no longer serve you. It's getting rid of the bad guys. It's changing the whole terrain in there. It's fixing a leaky gut. It's upregulating the intestinal stem cells. Like there is massive repair going on during what in all different length fasts in the microbiome. When you go back into the fed state, if you want a really healthy microbiome, you want to continue that healing effect, then you're going to need to do fermented foods. Bring those fermented foods back in so we can bring good probiotic rich foods. Add in those polyphenol foods, a lot of olives, uh, berries, blueberries are high in polyphenols, chocolate is high in polyphenols. Add some of the polyphenols in and then the prebiotic foods like the nuts, the seeds, the chia seeds, the hemp seeds. Like add the, that all in and now you're feeding the good microbes and you're allowing them to grow. So 
one of the challenges I see with the critics of fasting is they're, they're taking fasting and only looking at the fasting window. This is why Eat Like a Girl was so important to write for me, because I was like, I got to show you the principles of eating and how these two work together. But fasting became this like hero, like, like biohack, and we keep it in isolation without pairing it to the right foods. I would like to talk about how do you make sure that first meal matters? How do you build muscle, build a good microbiome, and specifically in that first meal? All right. So the two concerns you address, the microbiome and loss of muscle mass, what you're saying is the food we have afterwards is going to nullify those. To get into a little bit more detail on that, if somebody's doing a longer fast, is it the first meal that they come back from that that they're going to want to introduce protein and fermented foods? Or do we want to ease back in with something more gentle and then within, say, 24 hours, get those other foods in to rebuild? The latter. So if you're doing a fast longer than 24 hours, I in the book I have, in both books, I have a four-step process. And so you want to start with a broth, then you bring in the fermented food, then you test some like vegetables, lightly steamed vegetables, and then you bring in the protein. So the longer the fast, the more methodical that process needs to be. If it's a 15, 17 hour, or maybe even a 24 hour fast, then just ask yourself, I want to build muscle. So I better make sure I get enough protein in this first meal. So yes, there are two different styles to that, to be able to ease back into food with intention and, and have an effect on your body. Okay. So fermented food's good. How are you feeling about probiotics these days in general? And then after a longer fast to replenish the gut? The supplement? Yeah, a supplement. Yeah, I think temporary use of a probiotic is good. Um, what I clinically saw for so many years is people using a probiotic and taking it over and over and over again. Um, I would always tell my patients, you have 90 days on a probiotic and then you need to get off of it. And the reason for that is we've got trillions of bacteria in our gut. We've got thousands of different species. Each, the, even the best probiotic that you could ever find maybe has 100, 100 at the best strains of different probiotics, but you have thousands of these different strains. So when we take a probiotic over and over and over again, we create what we call a monoculture where there are certain bacteria that really become dominant and other bacteria that become less useful. The name of the microbial game is diversity. You want all those good microbes to be fed and energized. You don't want to create this imbalance. So I like probiotics as temporary tools that can help you grow certain parts of your microbiome. To your point, I think they could be interesting after a fast. They could be interesting during a fast because what you're doing is you're helping to replenish the microbes that some of those microbes might have slept off. You're adding, it's just like fermented foods, you're adding in the good probiotics so we can really start to repopulate this. It's a little bit like um, putting miracle Grow, you know, after you've cleaned up all the soils in your, in your garden and you're about to like put in some new plants, it's like adding a probiotic would be like miracle Grow that you know it's just going to do an extra special thing for the food that's to come. And this relates to how we opened up talking about all the confusion within different diets and ways of eating. These days, the probiotic world, specifically within the health and wellness space, has become so complicated with soil-based, spore-based, double encapsulated. We could go on and on, refrigerated, non-refrigerated. What do you look for in a good probiotic? Well, the first thing is whatever probiotic you're taking, make sure you don't take it more than 90 days. Keep switching it up. If you, if you have like five probiotics, keep switching them up. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm all about microbial diversity. So I want something that's got like, a, you know, like, like as many different strains in it as possible. So something that has 10 strains, 12 strains, that's not very strong. But if you can find something that has 50 to 100 different strains of bacteria, 
okay, now you've got a pretty diverse uh, uh, probiotic. And then as far as the soil base, the double encapsulated, um, yeah, I, I shy away from, from that stuff because again, I, I actually shy away from probiotics in general because what I see is the fasted state mixed with the way you break your fast, the way I've explained it is, is far more beneficial to the gut than an actual probiotic. Now, there are certain things like, I don't know if you've had this woman on your podcast, but I was just at a dinner party a couple of weeks ago with a bunch of wellness people in the wellness world. And one of the women there is a scientist who studies the a specific, specific strain of probiotic called acromancia. You probably have had her on. Everybody is all into this strain of bacteria. And so I presented this to her, this, I'm like, this is what I see in the fasting world. What do you think? And she said, I love everything you're saying. I absolutely agree with the exception that acromancia, you can't get in food. Okay. And I'm like, well, and then what happens? Does that bacteria die as you age? And she's like, yes. So now I haven't gone to see what the fasting research shows on particularly helping this one strain of bacteria. But if we have certain microbes that we can't get in food and we lose those microbes over time and we can only get those microbes in probiotics, hmm, now I'm interested. But for the most part, I think fasting and breaking it with what these polyphenol, probiotic, and prebiotic foods, it out performs any probiotic that's out there. Okay, so we've made it clear. We don't need to fear fasting when it comes to the microbiome. What are some of the things in the modern environment inputs that are having the biggest detriment on the microbiome these days? Well, we're back at the ultra processed foods. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I love is ultra processed foods are having a day. Like we're, we're hearing it. And I hope people are grabbing it. So the toxic oils, the, to the highly refined carbohydrates, the re highly refined sugars, and the chemicals in food destroy your microbiome. Antibiotic-rich foods. So these are your meats that have been, antibiotics have been either pumped into the animal or they have been eating grains that have been sprayed with a lot of chemicals. So we have to look at the quality of meat if you're going to eat meat. And I think grass-fed is amazing. Grass-fed beef is incredible. Um, some of the wild salmon is really good. It's got all those omegas in the wild salmon that are going to feed the microbes. So we want to make sure we got clean meat, not, not toxic meat. Um, the taking of antibiotics, the taking of the birth control pill. I, I, in preparing for Eat Like a Girl... I did, I ended up down a whole rabbit hole of what the birth control pill is doing to the microbes in our gut. And it's changing those microbes so that they become less efficient at upregulating about nine different vitamins and minerals. So now it's those microbes that pull the vitamins and minerals out of your food and the birth control pill has killed those microbes. So now you're not, you're getting deficient in those vitamins and minerals. It also destroys, you know, like overall the microbial system. So, and how many women have been on birth control pill for decades? So I have to throw the birth control pill into that one as well. And then Any the stats one, if people are using less of it? In our world, it's been known for a long time of the detriments of using that. But have you looked at any stats in a general sense, if it's still being widely used? I haven't seen lower dose is what you're asking. Like if we go into a lower dose birth control. Just if pill? less people are using it, the awareness oh. of the detriment of it is becoming more mainstream and less people are using I it. I hope so. If you've seen that at all. I mean, I, I haven't seen it at all. I can tell you that I have a 24-year-old daughter and a 22-year-old son, and I hang around a lot of 20-year-olds because of it. And I have a lot of conversations because of my passion for hormones with, with these 20 year olds and birth control is one that comes up a lot. And I would say based off that small sample size, I am not seeing that people are shying away from the birth control pill. 
I, okay. I don't. That's what I was so getting I, at. Yeah, I would need to see more stats, but from hanging out with that generation, no. Most of them are going on birth control early. Um, and then there is the second most common one is an IUD. A lot of them are switching to IUDs, which would be better for the microbes. So, um, so that might be, maybe we're seeing more people switch over to that, but I don't have the stats. I only have the conversations I've had with several Got people it. in that generation. When I jumped in there, you're going to go into another input negatively impacting the microbiome. Oh, the, the last one is stress. Like you want to destroy your microbiome, like the more stress you have, the more you kill those microbes. So, but in Eat Like a Girl, I listed out like ingredients. So people, I really wanted charts in there for people to be able to go, oh, these are the things I need to look for in ingredient labels. A lot of the chemicals that are in ultra processed foods um, are listed in that chart. If you enjoyed that clip, you're going to want to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. If you're feeling more confused than ever, then let's just come back to some basic principles like these five foundational food ideas and learning how to fast. And you will see so much change.